Red Bull have lost Adrian Newey as official. He's tendered his resignation. He is going first quarter of 2025. But does it really matter? Greetings. I come to you from the future. Well, at least, or is it present? Well, at least a couple of days. It's just after the Miami Grand Prix. And I'll update what Adrian Newey thinks, maybe a little bit towards the end. But what a race, huh? Well done, Lando. Enjoy. Hold on, what do you mean, does it really matter? This guy's been responsible for nearly the World Championship winning car for God knows how long. Maybe the last 10, 15 years. You know, not just with Red Bull, McLaren, Williams. This guy's a legend. How can it not matter? Well, there's a lot of things coming into play here. And we'll go through them all because... It's not quite as simple as you think. It's not just down to a few sketches on paper. And this is a world championship winning car. But first of all, let's address the elephant in the room. Red Bull, why did you release this information today? The anniversary of the death of Ayrton Senna. 30 years ago to this very day, that guy died qualifying for the Emily Grand Prix. Why did you release it today? And of all things... He was in an Adrian Newey designed car. Now that's not a contributory factor to the accident, but a little bit of respect. And maybe you have released it in a couple of days time after the Grand Prix or tomorrow, which is the actual media day. Why not just hold it for 24 hours and let it go? Or if you really had to put it out there, do it yesterday. Why do it today? I think it shows a marked lack of respect. And I think it shows more flaws in Christian Horner's thinking. I think the guy's starting to unravel. As we move further and further into the, the power struggles and possibly the reasons why Adrian's leaving. In fact, let's look at that. Why is Adrian leaving Red Bull? Because I think Adrian Newey is the quintessential English gentleman. He's the man that sits in the background. He does his work. He gets everything done. And he... He is firmly in favour of family and friends. And I think he's loyal to a fault in all these shenanigans that have been stirred up by Christian. I think he's taken a very dim view of that. And then, of course, there's been the angry Dutchman who has fallen out with Christian and they've been at loggerheads as well. And then you've got the Thai businessman who owns the majority shareholding of Red Bull and the sons of Dieter Maschusitz at each other for a power struggle as to who's controlling Red Bull, the parent company, not the, not the powertrains or the Formula One team. And then Christian, he's trying to get part of the company. He wants a kind of Toto type deal because Toto owns like a third of Mercedes, you know, the Mercedes Formula One team. So Christian doesn't want to be an employee. So he's banging away at that. The angry Dutch are trying to fight their corner Everybody's not quite sure what did or didn't happen with these alleged allegations. So did the horn dog incident fire everything off? And then it's just snowballed from there. And Adrian's went, Poof, I'm out. I'm out. And you know what? I think probably at this moment in time, Red Bull's a toxic environment. I don't think it's a nice place to be. And I think most of the people are looking for a way out now. And that's going to cause a big problem because... This isn't the, the kind of environment that you want to operate in, especially if you're a world champion in the, the guise of Max Verstappen, who relies on the team. I mean, he's not a sole operator here. He's relying on his team and his family and that to support him and, and to keep with him as they push for the next world championship. And they'll get it this year because the car is so dominant. And Max, Max is so dominant as well. But what happens after that? And why doesn't it matter that Adrian's actually leaving? Because it maybe it doesn't matter as much as you think it does. So let's go through where we are with what's actually happening. So yeah, we know that Adrian's now leaving. We don't know where he's going. There are options there. He could retire. He could just give up. He is 65. He probably wants a quieter life. Does he? Or does he want to keep the challenge going? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. Um, he's going to have to take a year's gardening leave because, you know, Formula One is a big club. They have a non-compete 
agreement amongst themselves. It's a kind of gentleman's agreement. So he's going to be he's going to be out of it for a year. So he'll be, he can do as many drawings as he likes, but technically he's not working for wherever he goes, whether it be Ferrari or another team. He's not working for them for a year. So he's going to be out the loop to a degree. I'm sure he'll have methods and means and abilities to do things, but officially he'll be completely out of the loop. And I think most of the teams accept that because if they go against it, then they're shooting themselves in the foot if the same thing happens to them. So Adrian's not going to have any real effect on a car until 2027. Because by the time he's done his year out and then spends a year designing the next, it's going to be 2027, 2028 before his influence really starts to come through in the car. The 2026 engine regulations are putting more emphasis on the powertrain rather than the aerodynamics. In fact, some are saying that the aerodynamics are down by 40%, in which case the chassis design and the aerodynamics are going to be less important than the powertrain. So who's got the upper hand in the powertrain? Well, we won't know until 2026, but there are early indications that Mercedes powertrain is looking really good. Honda's very tight-lipped. We don't know what's happening there because Honda's in a position just now where it's working with Red Bull. But in 2026, it will be supplying Aston Martin with a new engine. Aston Martin will have the works Honda engine and that will be it. So Red Bull at the moment has a Honda engine, but it's not going to have it. And Honda only hung around because they had left Formula One and Red Bull had to go out and source a new engine. But then Honda says, oh, hold on. We've won a world championship. We're, we're, we're actually going to hang around for a couple of years. But by that point, everything has down, was down and committed. And Red Bull are committed to building their own engine, Red Bull powertrains, with the assistance of Ford Motor Company. Now, how long... Was Ford Motor Company ever really built a Formula 1 engine or was it always Cosworth? I'm not quite sure. But it's been a long time since Ford built a Formula 1 engine. So they will be playing catch-up. They might hit the ground running. We don't know. I suspect they're not going to have the depth of knowledge that Mercedes have, who have been doing this very successfully for a while, that Honda have, who have been doing it successfully for a while, after their whole GP2 engine fiasco. But they've came through that and they are now delivering one of the best engines out there. And then we've got Ferrari, who've always been able to deliver an engine of some kind. And then, of course, there's Renault. They, they're still in the game and the guys of Alpine. And they could come up with an engine because they're a manufacturer. You know, They've got a wealth of talent and a mass of resource behind them. So they could come up with a good engine. So all your big teams have got a manufacturer engine company behind them, apart from Red Bull, who are technically building their own Red Bull powertrains with assistance from Ford. So I'm not quite sure whose engine this is and where it's come from and in whose brain it was conceived. It's unlikely to be anything to do with Honda because they're not going to give away their you know, intellectual property to another company when they're moving on to Aston Martin and will obviously want to push for the World Championship with them and Fernando Alonso. Because somehow I don't think the second driver in that team's up to it. If he remains the second driver. And if Aramco have any say in it, he probably won't. But I think Mr. Stroll needs a, he needs a wake-up call. Yeah. Bring, 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 bring. It's your early morning wake-up call, Mr. Stroll. Get rid of Lance. Anyway, harsh but, harsh but true. There we have it. We have... The big players, we've got Mercedes with their own engine, Ferrari with their own engine, Aston Martin with a Honda engine, Alpine with the Renault engine. Red Bull maybe aren't going to be a big player in 2026. So what does this mean for Max? Because Max is contracted through to 2028. Or is he? Because Max has a clause in his contract, allegedly, that says if any of the key members of the Red Bull team leave... He can, exit a, he can activate a brake clause and leave as well. Now, we've always assumed that's Helmut Marko because that is Max's pal and he seems to fulfil the role of, of mentor. But a key, a key member of the Red Bull team would also be Christian Horner and could it be Adrian Newey? So 
If that's the case, then Max maybe has free reign to leave. But where would he go? Oh, I forgot about Audi. Audi's going to have their own engine in 2026 as well. It's going into the Sauber, which isn't looking great just now. But Audi's got deep pockets as well, so they're going to throw money at that. So there's another team, but they don't have the wealth of experience that the, the big four players have. And I think if you want to win a world championship in 2026, it's likely you're going to have to be in one of those big four teams. You're either going to have to be in Ferrari, Alpine, really, Aston Martin, or Mercedes. Because McLaren might look good just now, but McLaren's a customer engine team. And I don't think they're going to have the edge when it comes to 2026. Williams won't have the edge when it comes to 2026 if they're still being supplied as customer engines, which they no doubt are. Red Bull and Audi are outliers because they're effectively building brand new engines from scratch without a wealth of experience and knowledge from a continued presence in Formula One over the last decade or so. So the question is, how does Max win a world championship in 2026 with Red Bull? Well, he probably won't. Because the early rumours are that the Red Bull engine isn't quite performing to expectation. It's shit. Mercedes' engine, on the other hand, is looking really strong. But Mercedes have got a crap chassis. Isn't this where Adrian Newey would really make a difference? Well, would he? Would he? Because remember, the powertrain's going to be... 60% of the car, the aerodynamics are 40% less. Is the chassis going to make as big a difference? Is Adrian going to be able to make that massive difference that he's made in the past? Or does someone else just get lucky and really hit it? And if Mercedes fix the problems they've had with their car up till now, i.e. they're going to build a new car with a new powertrain, and if that's the top dog powertrain and they build a good car, it doesn't even need to be a great car, it needs to be a good car, and they put a good driver in it, they, are we going to see the resurgence of Mercedes as a dominant Formula 1 team? It's possible. And Toto, Toto is pushing and pushing and pushing for Max to drive that car. That's what he needs. He needs Max to drive that car. And I think his argument, after the Miami, Miami Grand Prix, when they sit down and chat with the angry Dutchman and Max, the argument's going to be, we can provide you with the best powertrain. Red Bull's a complete unknown. So you stick with Red Bull, you could be you could be left in the weeds. You could be fighting for ones and twos in the points scheme. If you go with Mercedes, you could be fighting with the championship. That's what I think Toto's going to say. And I think the same thing applies to Fernando at Aston Martin. I think he could be fighting for a world championship if Honda hit the ground with that engine. And the same thing applies to Lewis at Ferrari because although Lewis has been fed up with Mercedes and you know maybe things have gone the wrong way because of the friction of the car not performing to expectations maybe the team not gelling around him as much as they used to he's still a good driver and he's still got plenty in him and regardless of what you think of him He's got the capability of putting the car where it shouldn't be, which is the kind of thing that Fernando can do. So you don't get to be seven seven times world championship champion, you know, just because you can drive a really good car. Because the other guy in the other seat wasn't world champion, was he? Same could be said for Checo. Why is he not world champion? And Max is because one of them's better than the other. End of story. So. The people that are lining up for the World Championship in 2026 are Lewis, Fernando, and the driver of Mercedes. And who's the driver of Mercedes going to be? I think it's going to be Max Verstappen. What about Adrian? What if he, he, he's been already down as saying that he wants to work? He, I, his big regret has been he's not worked with Fernando and he's not worked with Lewis and he's not worked with Ferrari. And he could kill, he could kill a couple of those by going to Ferrari. But... You know, how settled is he in England? He's lived in England all his life. He's 65 years old. Has he got grandchildren? Does he want to relocate to Italy? I mean, travelling's not going to be a big bugbear for him. He's got plenty of money. He's been on 10 million a year for 20 years. You know, so money's not an issue to him. I think convenience might be. And Aston Martin, 
25 minutes down the road from his house. You know, a pretty sedate drive to the office. Just saying. And he gets to work with Fernando Alonso. I think Adrian's... I think there's a 55% chance that Adrian's going to go to Aston Martin. Because Aramco's got big money as well. So this isn't going to be a money problem. I know people are saying he's going to Ferrari, but I think the whole relocation thing might... It might skew things. We'll see. We'll see. I... I think at the moment I'm putting fifty five percent on him going to Aston. The rest he'd probably go to Ferrari. I don't think he would go to Mercedes. I don't think he'd fit into the Mercedes team. I don't think he's needed to. But Mercedes definitely want they definitely want Max. And of course they're also going to dress the deal up because Helmet's gonna come with Max. And you know, Toto Toto and Nicky were Nicky Lauda were real good friends. Nicky Lauda was the kind of guiding figure around the paddock and around the team and they still hang his hat up you know every time they go for a race his hat still gets hang up, hung up on the board where all the headsets are so Helmut Marco and Nicky were good friends as well so maybe Helmut Marco takes over that role and and you know becomes the mentor to the team so I, I don't see that not happening I mean Helmut's 80 so you know he's maybe not going to be around for long but as long as he is around, Max is going to be dragging him around with him, I think. So, yeah, I can see Max at Mercedes. I think Toto might get his way. And what's that going to mean for uh, Tricky Dicky over uh, Red Bull? Well, I think Red Bull's, Red Bull's just exploding. It's just going to go down. Yeah. Um, I think their engine's going to be crap. They've lost Adrian Newey, but they'll, they'll still design a good car. They'll give it a good shot. But I think there's a reason that nobody's hung about. You know, I think there's a reason Lewis didn't you know, didn't he didn't even have to second guess when he went to Ferrari because they're on the up. Fernando signed up for Aston Martin. He didn't hang around waiting to see what was going to happen with Red Bull. Carlos is still sitting on the fence. I think, I think Carlos is looking at it from a young man's perspective of if I get on that car next year, I could win the world championship. Yeah, but long term, where are you going to be? I think Carlos, you need to go to Audi, mate. Just go to Audi. Get your head down and you'll be the world champion at some point. Because Audi, Audi will throw money at it until they win. I mean, look what they've done. Look what they did with your dad. And look what they'll do with you. So, yeah, go to Audi. Take take the, take the next year at Sauber and just sign up. Sign up now for Audi. And just go. Do the best you can. Then it's your team. They build the team around you. And when you're the world champion, you can think, I built this. You know? So, yeah. That's where to go, Carlos. This is Hamilton's last couple of years or so at Ferrari. He'll be wanting to try and give Ferrari something they haven't had since Kimi Raikkonen. In, what, 2007? When Kimi Raikkonen snatched, snatched, the, snatched the championship from Hamilton after Hamilton beached it in China. Do you remember that one? That was the last time Ferrari won a world championship. Kimi Raikkonen. So Hamilton might be the guy to give them the next championship. Because Leclerc is a fantastic driver. He's a great driver. But there's a reason why they say he's got a singular brain cell because he doesn't seem he doesn't seem to have the capacity of the really great world champions who can who can look at everything that's going on in a race, even sometimes looking at the scoreboard and working out what's going on. And you hear it all the time with Fernando and Hamilton to a degree. They're asking what's going on and they're telling you where they're going to do things. And Saints, Saints does it as well. So I think all three of them are have maybe all got a championship still in them. Especially Fernando. Fernando does have a championship in him. He just needs to be in the right car at the right time. And if Honda hit it with a powertrain, there's a good chance he's got a chance in 2026. Red Bull don't. So if Max wants to be the world champion in 2026 and beyond... He needs to go to Mercedes, and he might as well go now, after he's won the World Championship this year. Go out on a high, go to Mercedes, and again, you are the man that rebuilds them, and you become the conquering hero in 2026. The 2025 World Championship goes to whoever's driving the Red Bull. Simple as that. So I listened to some of the Sky pundits going on about um, Adrian Newey, uh, Jensen Button being one of them, and he tends to agree with me. He thinks why Ferrari does look like an 
interesting choice. I think the the whole move relocation thing might be just not what Adrian's wanting, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. But more, even more interesting was when Martin spoke to Adrian and he said that he was tired and he was wanting to rest. And I think that's probably pretty fair because he's been involved in this sport for, what, 45, 45 years easy, I would say, maybe longer. So with all the shenanigans going on at Red Bull, I think he's probably thought, yeah, stuff it, I'm going to take some time out. I think he'll get bored and he'll come back. But pretty much everything I've said in the previous video, I'll stand by it just now. I will stand by it. Simple as that. And that's why it doesn't really matter where Adrian Newey goes. It'd be interesting, but it doesn't matter.